Hello everyone. Uh, so this is just a sort of rehearsal for me because I'm going to be using Twitch to give a class on computational biology and modeling. And so I wanted to go through a quick 10 minutes of um, experiment. But also I thought it would be uh, very cool to talk a little bit about one of my favorite parts of the Julia programming language, which is its uh, package manager. So. If you use a language like R, when you install a package, they all live together in the same place, which is a common folder for all packages. And unless you're using some specific parts of the R ecosystem, if you want to see what packages you need, you either, add to, you either need to ask someone for the list of things that I use in their code, or you need to um, read the code and figure out what it's called. On the other hand, if you're using something like Node and uh, JavaScript, every single package that is used in a project is living alongside the code of the project itself in the directory. And that ends up being a gigantic uh, folder because if you have 10 projects that use 10 times the same package, then you have 10 copies of this package. So on one end, this solution is really good because you know that if you just copy, like drag and drop a folder, you also drag and drop the dependency and everything is going to just work. Uh, but it's also leading to some redundancy. One of the um, issues with uh, a system like R is almost like the opposite version where you have a um, central version for all of the packages. And so maybe you want to use different version of different packages for different project, and that's sort of not ideal, it's easy to do that. The Julia package manager, I think, managed to solve this issue in a way that maximizes reproducibility, but also minimizes the amount of thing that you need to have on you, uh, within your folder. So there's less clutter, but also more reproducibility. And I just like to show you how um, it works. So we're going to be doing something really simple and really decidedly not cool or interesting, but we're just going to create a statistical distribution and draw a value from that. Uh, I'm using uh, the Visual Studio Code um, extension for Julia, which is, um, it's, it's really good. It just works sort of out of the box. It has nifty little um, um, things that it can do for you. We're just going to uh, go through the, the very basics. So I have a file, which is called main.jl. And we're just going to start a Julia session here. Uh, and it, it's only, uh, for the moment, it's only comments, so it's not going to be doing anything. So the Julia package manager is, uh, is going to be accessed by uh, using the closing square bracket at the RAPL. So if we just do closing square bracket, we switch the prompt from Julia to at 1.5 and then package. So this 1.5 things, it's telling us that we are currently working within the global environment. We're not working within a project. And so in a sense, we could be installing packages in Julia the way we do in R, and everything is going to go at the same place. But that's not what we do. We're not working on in Julia as a whole, we're not working within the general environment. We are working on a specific project. And so we are going to um, activate this project. And so one thing that is uh, going to happen in here, one thing that is, uh, I think, fairly interesting is that when we activate something, we get a new environment. And that is the folder when we are working at the moment. So it's in slash work slash varia slash whatever project dot uh, toml. But also the prompt changes from 1.5 to package. So we are working within something that is, uh, that is local. Now, um, usually when you start VS code, uh, in a Julia folder that has, um, a specific file in it, we'll see in a minute what that is. It's going to pick up that this is this environment. Uh, if not, there is a way of telling it to, um, work here and we are just going to say work within package. It's not going to make any difference here. Uh, and yeah, okay, let's never mind that. 
So at the moment, we have activated a new environment. And what we will need to do to generate our statistical distribution and add some, uh, some, is add some package. So we are going to add the distributions package. Distributions is one of my absolute favorite Julia packages because it is just fantastic to work with uh, and offer a very, very smart interface to statistical distributions. There's a lot of things we can do with this package uh, and, and much more than what I'm about to do. So when we, um, when we type add and then the name of the package, what happens is that we are uh, letting Julia know that we will be using this package for the purpose of our um, work. And so if we look at the status of our environment, which is called uh, PKG here, we know that uh, it has a distribution package, that the version we are using is uh, node uh, ten. And this thing here is, as you may have guessed, uh, the identifier of a specific commit on GitHub that tells us the exact version of the package that we're using. So one thing that is interesting is that uh, if we look at the file explorer on the left here, we still have the file that we're using, but we do not have a copy of the package. The package is going to be installed uh, locally in a central location. What we have now are two files. The first is called project.toml. And this is a very important file that is letting uh, Julia, but also letting your extension, your text editor, your IDE know that you are working within a specific project. It's like an experiment. It's a room where you do your science, you do your engineering, and in this room are the tools that you need, and these tools are packages. So for the moment, the only one we need is distributions, and that is the uh, identifier, the unique identifier of distributions. One thing that is very um, useful is that you could have another package called distribution that could be a different package because it would have a different unique identifier. So let's say you don't like the distributions package that exists and you want to have your own distribution package, you can give it a different uh, identifier because package are using the names just for convenience, but the actual way to identify them is this uh, UUID that is here. So that's interesting because when we have this project.toml file, we don't need to guess what packages are needed to run a project. We can go into the, uh, sorry, the package interface. And if this is a new, uh, we are running this code on a new machine, for example, we can type instantiate and it is going to be looking through the project file and getting the packages that we need, which I think is really neat because there's not a lot of, uh, th there's no guesswork anymore as to what may be working. So that is the first file and it's project.toml and there's a lot more things you can do, but the uh, package manager is very well documented. The second file that is being created is where the magic happens, so to speak. Uh, and it's a manifest. So the manifest is starting with a warning which is like keep your hands out of this file because it is generated by the machine and there is a lot of things that are happening at once. So basically, the manifest is going to keep track of every single dependency in the tree of dependencies. So the project is simple. It's just a distribution package and we have the unique identifier of this project, of this package. And if we wanted, we could have a specific version. Say, I need to be working with this specific version of distributions. In the uh, manifest, what we have is the complete tree of dependency. So if we go look for, uh, let's say, where is distribution? So to use the distribution packages, we need all of these dependencies. We need field arrays, linear algebra, PDMAT, random, sparse array, statistics, whatever. And so in turn, if we want to use this package called uh, statsbase, for example, so to build statsbase, 
we need data API, data structure, linear algebra, missings, random sort, all of that. So there is an entire tree of dependency and it is stored within the manifest. So one thing that is really interesting is that for every package, we not only get its dependency, but we also get um, the, the tree, the identifier of the commit in the git tree on which we are working. So if you have an issue, if you encounter a bug with a package, you can say exactly which version you are working on. Not just the point release, but this specific commit is what I'm, uh, is what I'm running on my machine. There's also the unique identifier of the package and then the version that we are um, using. You, you'll notice that some of the packages do not have this information, like statistics, for example, which is here, uh, only as dependencies and the UUID. And the reason for that is that uh, statistics is part of the, uh, the base library of Julia. It's part of the common library. It's sort of built in. It's not a package that is in addition to Julia. It's something that exists that we only need to load. Uh, and so there's no git tree and there's no... Uh, there's no version that are associated to these packages. So once we have that, I'm just going to close and not save this thing. Once we have that, we can uh, get back to this uh, to this file and we could use our uh, distributions packages. So one thing that is uh, really interesting here is that when we add the package, it's not uh, it's not pre-compiled, it's not pre-built. It just sort of gets installed, and then the first time you use it, it is going to be uh, pre-compiled and then built. Now, the second thing that is important to notice here, uh, in addition to the project and the manifest file, is that there will be no additional files generated when you are compiling uh, a package, unless like there's a few, a few exceptions, I think, but most of the time it's not going to be um, changing. And the reason is because the versions of the package are living not within the um, not within the folder in which you work, but in a central location. And you might have different versions of distributions. But if you have five of your project that are using distributions version uh, node port 24 and five other projects that are using node point 22, you will only get one copy of point 24 and one copy of point 22. So there's an interesting balance between storing the metadata about the packages and the environment within the project and then storing the actual packages within a common folder for the entire computer. That's uh, extremely useful if you need to be building like binary tools within the context of compiling a project. If you need to build something, it's probably going to be machine specific. So it wouldn't make sense to be dragging your binary dependency along with your project when they could be uh, built and compiled and optimized for the computer that you are using them on. Like a very common use case uh, in my own life is uh, I have my laptop at home, I have a workstation at work, and I have uh, some code running in a cluster uh, somewhere else. They all use different distributions of Linux, they all use different architecture, they all have different uh, toolkits installed on them, and so whenever I'm building something, I am building a version of this thing that is um, customized for the machine on which it is running. Uh, and if you're working with multiple people, what is what gets really interesting is that you can be working with someone using Linux, someone using a Mac OS, someone using Windows, as long as you can specify the project in terms of uh, here are the packages I need and here are the dependencies of the packages that I need to pull and the exact same version, then then everyone will be on the same page and it makes collaboration a lot more transparent and seamless. And that is something that I really, um, I really like. So um, just to, uh, let's just switch here. The other um, interesting thing is that these files are really light. It's just text. It's a little bit of text. The project is 62 bytes. The manifest is 6,000 bytes. So it's, it's like really, really nothing in the grand scheme of things as compared to uh, pulling a lot of, uh, of file, putting a lot of binaries, because it's just a very compact way of specifying um, information. 
So that uh, was a very short introduction to the um, Julia Package Manager, uh, where well, I think it's good. I haven't touched one half of a percent of what it can do, but there is a really great online documentation. Uh, and the package manager is called pkg.gl. There's a lot of things you can do. Uh, it's also what you use to develop packages. It's also what you use to modify them. You can freeze certain version. You can uh, use semantic versioning to make sure that everything is going to be working within your project. But just a basic uh, ID behind it is within your environment, you should be documenting the packages you use. And then the package manager is going to keep track of everything that is required in order to get this package to, um, to build. That's one part of the Julia ecosystem that I like the most is this idea of a package manager that uh, keeps the project small, but also maximizes um, distribution. So that's it for me and let's I'll, I'm just going to be spending a bit of time dissecting this stream to see if that's something I want to use for my class. Uh, and there's always a chat if you have some comments or uh, questions. Bye everyone.